Hi students! Yesterday we talked about how to do Lewis dot structures so we can draw molecules ourselves. And today I'd like to go over with you a few shortcuts for writing some structures down. Now yesterday we talked about listing all of our atoms and then adding up how many valence electrons each atom had and then that would allow us to know how many electrons we needed to place in our molecule in order to satisfy that rule and the octet rule. Now, when you guys are practicing with your homework, what you'll notice is that you'll probably have to draw a few structures until you get it right. And that's okay because you're learning. But if we learn what things like to do, which different elements like to do what in our structures, then we can easily put together a molecule that will probably get us to the right answer a little bit quicker. And it'll allow us to look at a molecule and notice if there's something wrong about it. Now, first on the list is halogens. So our halogens, are this column right here. So we've got 17 or 7A. Those are fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. And those atoms like to be terminal. So that's our first rule. They like to be on the end, meaning they don't like to be in the center of two other atoms. And they like to have one single bond and three lone pairs. So how we will see that is like this, or like this, or like this. So they just like one single bond. So that's one bonding pair and three non-bonding pairs. And what I mean by terminal is if we have this molecule here, our halogen will like to be on the end. So we can put it on the end here, or we can put it on the end here, or we can put it on the end here, just as long as it is on the end and it has a single bond, which is also called a bonding pair, and three lone pairs, or three pairs of non-bonding electrons. So there are quite a few different ways that we'll see that. Now carbon, carbon likes to have four bonding pairs and no lone pairs. Carbon is not happy when it has lone pairs. So the different ways that we'll see this, we could have four single bonds. So for instance, if you have the molecule methane, carbon will go in the center and the hydrogens will go all around the outside. So you can see there that carbon has four single bonds. We could also say it has four bonding pairs and it has no lone pairs. It has no non-bonding electrons. So the carbon there has its octet two, four, six, eight, and all of the hydrogens there have a duet. So you can see everybody's happy and doing what they like to do. The other way that carbon will bond is with two double bonds. So it'll look something like that, and we'll have atoms on the other sides of those double bonds. And each double bond is four bonding electrons or two bonding pairs. So we have two, four bonding electrons there, or two bonding pairs. So you can see that you, we will also see a double bond and two single bonds, and you could see it that way, or it could be drawn that way, or it could be drawn this way. And again, on the other side of those bonds, we would have another atom. The last way says one triple bond and a single bond. So carbon 
can have a triple bond on one side and a single bond on the other side. And maybe this molecule has a hydrogen there and it has a nitrogen on that side. And we can see that carbon has four bonding pairs three from the triple bond and one from the bond to hydrogen there. And we can see that it has an octet because we have two here and then four, six, eight, if we count each of the lines from the triple bond. What we also know about carbon is it likes to be central. Carbon loves to be central and carbon also likes to bond to other carbons. Remember, other atoms, they don't like to bond to atoms of the same element if they can avoid it, but carbon does like to bond to other carbons. Carbon also loves to bond to hydrogen. All right, so moving on, silicon. Silicon likes to do what carbon does, and what we'll notice is that silicon sits underneath carbon on the periodic tables, and on the periodic table, and elements that are in the same group on the periodic table, that same column, they tend to have similar characteristics. So they tend to do the same kinds of reactions and the same kind of bonding. So silicon will tend to do what carbon likes to do. The next one on the list is oxygen. Oxygen likes to have two bonding pairs and two lone pairs. And we've already seen this quite a bit with oxygen. Oxygen likes to do this, likes to have two bonding pairs and two lone pairs. We see that when we draw the Lewis structure for water. Also, oxygen can do two bonding pairs by having a double bond and then we'll just have to put in the lone pairs there. And we saw oxygen do this when we drew formaldehyde. So that was this molecule on the other slide. So we have seen oxygen do what it likes to do quite a few times already. Now sulfur. Sulfur sits underneath oxygen on the periodic table. So here are the, those two elements. So sulfur is going to tend to do what oxygen does. Sulfur does what oxygen does, but it also does something quirky. Sometimes sulfur can expand its octet, meaning it can have more than eight valence electrons around that, around it. And we'll see that if we see the polyatomic ion sulfate drawn out. Sulfate, sometimes you'll see it drawn in its Lewis structure. And what it looks like is this. So if we count around, we'll see that sulfur has two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. And that might make us go, ah, that's way too many electrons around sulfur. And usually that's true when we're drawing Lewis structures. But just so you know, sulfur can expand its octet, meaning that it can go over eight. But that's not something we'll generally do in this class. I just wanted to show you that just in case you Google something and you see that and you're like, oh, it doesn't look right. Yeah, it's quirky like that. It can do that. All right. So nitrogen. Nitrogen likes to have three bonding pairs and one lone pair. So the molecule that we'll see quite often in this class is ammonia, that's NH3. And we can see that in NH3, nitrogen is gonna do exactly what nitrogen likes to do. It's gonna have three bonding pairs and one lone pair. So there we have two, four, six, eight. So it's got an octet like that. Nitrogen will also do a double bond and a single bond and a lone pair. So there it has three bonding pairs, two from the double bond and one from the single bond and its lone pair. And you can draw that lone pair on top of the nitrogen if you want. Nitrogen will also do a triple bond. And we saw it do that when we drew 
this molecule for carbon. So in this molecule, you can see nitrogen's doing what it likes to do. It has three bonding pairs and a lone pair. Carbon's doing what it likes to do. It has four bonding pairs and no lone pairs. And hydrogen's doing exactly what hydrogen likes to do. It just has a single bond and no lone pair. So remember, 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 no lone pair electrons on hydrogen. All right, so then we get to phosphorus. And phosphorus likes to do what nitrogen does because phosphorus and nitrogen are in the same group. So they're going to have similar characteristics. Like sulfur, phosphorus can expand its octet. So just in case you see PO4, which is our polyatomic ion phosphate drawn, what you guys will see is this right here. And those are little negative symbols. And there's three of them, so that explains a minus three on the polyatomic. And we can see here that we've got two, four, six, eight, ten electrons around that phosphorus right there. And that's like, ah, it's way more than an octet, but it does that sometimes. But again, in this class, we're just going to stick to things that follow the rules uh, for the octet. Now, hydrogen, we've already done hydrogen. It likes to be terminal, so it likes to be on the end, meaning do not put it between two or more atoms. It's always going to be on the end with a single bond. And again, no lone pairs. Now, boron. Boron's a little bit odd. Boron is good with a sextet. It doesn't like to have an octet. So if we have the molecule BH3, we would put boron in the middle. It occurs least often. And we know that hydrogens aren't central. They like to be on the end. And we would distribute the hydrogens around the boron, and we would see that boron has two, four, six. It likes to have three bonding pairs and no lone pair, and it's okay with a sextet. Also, in case you were asking this question, yes, you can draw this upside down like that. That's perfectly fine. It's exactly the same, and it's exactly as much correct as the one that we drew before. And we have to remember that molecules naturally tumble around in our beaker or wherever we have placed them. Okay, so let's move on to some problems and see if it's a little bit easier for us to do this if we start with thinking about what things like to do. Instead of starting with atoms and adding up the valence electrons. We'll do that to check it, but let's just see if we can um, get to a structure quicker. Okay, so we've got SH2 and sulfur. Sulfur is underneath oxygen on the periodic table, so it probably likes to do what oxygen does. So let's go ahead and think what would OH2 do? Now, OH2 is the same thing as H2O, which is what? Water. That's right. And we already drew water on another slide, and we said it looked like that. So the oxygen is doing what it likes to do. Two bonding pairs and two lone pairs, and the hydrogens are doing what they like to do. They're terminal, and they only have one single bond. So if we were to guess what the structure of SH2 is, we'd say that sulfur is probably going to do what oxygen does and go ahead and put itself in the middle of those two hydrogens right there. And it's going to want to have two lone pairs. Now that is the structure of SH2, but let's go ahead and check to make sure we have followed the two most important rules, so octet rule and using exactly the number of electrons that are available. So we go ahead and list our atoms like we did before. And we list our number of valence electrons. 
So again, that's a big V for valence and a little e with a minus symbol for electrons and then apostrophe S. Okay, so sulfur is in group 16 or 6A. So how many valence electrons does it have? Six, that's right. And hydrogens. Hydrogen is in group 1 or group 1A. So it has how many? One, that's right. So we have a total of eight valence electrons to work with. So let's go ahead and count these up. So we've got two, four, six, and eight. So we've used up those eight valence electrons for our structure. So we're good there. And let's see if everybody has a duet or an octet. So these two hydrogens, because they are sharing those electrons in the covalent bond, they can pretend that they've got a duet each. And the sulfur right here, two, four, six, eight. Four electrons from those two lone pairs and four electrons from those single bonds right there. So we follow the octet rule and we use the number of valence electrons available and our atoms are doing what they like to do. So we've got a winner here. Ding, 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 ding.